How many of you can feel His presence? If you cannot sense it. So we spoke on the realms. As you have your hands raised, this is where we are touching doxa, where it is the freedom and the liberty of the Spirit. It is where the Bible says when the glory of the Lord comes, that there's liberty in the Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It is where your spirit feel free. It is where burdens lift. All of a sudden, it'll be like a, a weight is just off you and you can rejoice or you can lift your hands. You can clap hands. Say the glory. Father, may the glory fill this place. May it come upon them. May angels minister to them tonight. I pray for importation of the glory of God. That it goes beyond just the church in an auditorium. And into their houses, into their rooms. Where they worship you, where they pray. May the reverberation of the Spirit, the frequency of the Spirit, touch them even in their houses when they go home tonight. When they open your mouth, may it be a direct connection to heaven. May it be a direct portal to heaven. May they be open heavens. May they be and open them in themselves. Like Jacob said, there's a gateway, there's a portal to heaven. May you establish a portal, a portal here. May you establish altars and portals at their houses. In Jesus' mighty name. Say with this, say portals. Say gateways to heaven. I want to I wanna get tonight before we're going to begin to lay hands and minister to you. And if you receive your healing, I want you to go to... Uh, Ushers testify so they can let us know uh, before the service ends. And it is a matter of, you see, a lot of us have a mindset to risk waiting for somebody to lay hands. Very limited. Very, very limited. You can never minister to nations. You can never minister online like that. People, we, I, we saw a lot of messages where people saying they're receiving and, and uh, miracles and so on. But you have to be able to tap into the glory and know how to receive it by faith. Are you guys with me? It can only done, be done in the atmosphere of the glory of God. Because in the atmosphere of glory, there is faith. Your faith is lifted. It is like all of a sudden you just believe in God. Even unbelievers, I saw last night, people that didn't even know God. And trust me, you can see when somebody doesn't know God. The glory came on them last night. When they are in the vicinity where the presence of God is, if people's hearts are right, they might not even know God, God will come upon them. And they'll leave this place knowing, they, we don't even have to do an altar call, and they'll leave this place knowing that they felt, they, they can't deny what they felt. Are you guys with me? So even the portals. So there are portals in the spirits. Portals that has to be opened. Portals that are kept open by somebody's faith. There are gateways, there are avenues, there are like we, what we call, for example, an airport. It is a place of transaction. It is a place of intersection. It is a place where angels land and where angels lift up. It is the place where heaven meets earth, where earth meets heaven. It is the place where the supernatural meets the natural. Where the spiritual meets the natural. Are you guys with me? It is the place where, even in the old covenant, we see how Abraham built an altar. And as he built an altar, he, it was by Bethel. We see Jacob the same. Jacob restored the altar that Abraham built at Bethel. When the Bible says that he put a rock in place and he anointed and he called the place Bethel, it was a pillar that he put up, not a rock like we think in our, in our, it was a pillar he put up that has fallen down. And he said, this is the gateway of God, the gateway of heaven, a portal, meaning where there is a portal, there will always be angelic activity. There will always be. You might not see it. Jacob didn't see it. Jacob didn't know it. He had a dream and then he saw it in a dream and then he woke up and he said, Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. Where the glory is, there will be portals and there will be angels. <laughs> Are you guys with me? 
As I said, we can get into, uh, uh, and we have a lot of people online, we want to ask you for those who are watching online, press the share button, press the thumbs up button on YouTube, press the like button on YouTube just to share it and get it out. We have over 1,400 or so watching now. Uh, those are people that we can't obviously fit in the building and they're watching from probably every continent. We got all the names of the continent here. Uh, I mean the nations here and they're watching from everywhere. That is what the glory does. It has the ability to go through and touch somebody that lives far away. It has made church available to be able for churches to be planted all over that is not limited by a local, uh, uh, a local place. Are you guys with me? So when it comes to angelic activity, as I mentioned a little bit every night, just to give people a glimpse of an idea of how angelic activity works. Angels can speak a variety of ways. They can obviously speak English to you. They can speak in a tone, a frequency. They can speak in the breath of a wind. It'll come past you like a breath. It'll come past you like a wind. They can speak to you in a sensing and a knowing. A lot of us want to wait for angel appear to speak fluent English to us. No, 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 no. These are spiritual beings. Are you guys with me? They are where the glory is. They are there. The glory cannot be there without angels. Uh, angels cover, carry and protect the glory. So where the glory of God is, where the presence of God is, angels are there. Trust me. They carry in the glory. And where the glory is, they protect the glory. But when you feel, even during worship, you might feel there's a sudden rush upon you or a sudden inspiration. It is usually a movement of angelic activity that goes past you. When you see the Kavod glory coming in, when people were under the weight tonight during praise and worship, it is angels that come and bring it into you. Listen to me. Are you guys with me? I've told people many times, I'll say I have a prophetic angel, but once I tap into the prophetic, or go, there's an angel that will minister to me. We have the Holy Ghost, but then there's another level where there's angels that will minister. And once that comes, and a prophetic angel is there, it is usually very accurate and very uh, detailed. Uh, Prophet Nyan, uh, this lady got healed during the, when you were praying. Uh, of, just in the glory, just in the of what? Back pain. She has severe back pain going up and down her left, her right side. For many months, she had these emotional thoughts. All the pain Many months. Back pains. She couldn't sleep many nights, and she's been taking medication for pain for months right. and months that she just left it, and then she completely got healed during so, the service. So come, come stand here. So is there something you couldn't do, or, or a movement that it was limited? to the Lord. I pray for full healing, full miracle. We declare it evidence of your glory in Jesus' name. Touch it right now. There will be no pain coming back. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise. Uh, there's another lady here. She says that she had blurry vision and she does not need her glasses anymore. Can you see completely? She, she, can, she can read the small script on the screens. Wow. She said her whole body was burning like it was her nervous system and her whole body got warm and now it is gone and all glory to God. So you can read, you can read far. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise. Braske ere, come on, braske. Awesome. There'll be more. You can receive miracles. You can receive deliverance. Are you guys with me? And when the glory is present, you'll feel that uh, even under preaching, your spirit will be open. Keep it open. You know, it is faith that keeps a person it keeps their spirit open where they can listen and hear every word. That is why time disappears where the presence of God is present. 
When I say the presence, the manifest presence, the glory. So I was speaking of angels, angelic activity. They can come in as a breath, as a wind. Uh, I have a prophetic angel, as I said. Uh, every person has a guardian angel. Every person has a guardian, every, every, at least every Christian, as far as we know, every person, but at least every Christian has a guardian angel. The Bible actually says and calls it a guardian angel. People just have, people don't read, people read what they want to read. The Bible calls it a guardian angel, an angel that will guard you. Lift up your feet that you don't dash your foot against the rock. But an angel that will guard you. Are you guys with me? And uh, when your spirit becomes sensitive, you can usually, when you're in the glory, when you're in a place of praise and worship and you're praying a lot and you, you have the ability where you can sense angels and then you can step into a place where the word says you can command angels. By the word of God, you can command angels. They are waiting for your command because they are the ones that brings answers for prayer. They are the ones that brings your healing. They are the ones that carries the glory. Are you guys with me? Usually you'll see if we're in a place where we're worshiping, I'll stand by a crowd and I'll just look at somebody. And it's like, wait, will come. I'll just look. And it's like they will be pushed to the ground or they'll suddenly fall. And I won't wave my hand. I'll just stand and look. If you saw here, you'll see this whole place was sitting when I stood there. What is happening? There's an angel that carries kavot that moves from me out and puts it on them. Sometimes I'll just stand in a crowd like this and I'll just think of one person here because angels talk in thinking. Are you guys with me? I'll think of one person here and then you'll see. And then all of a sudden they begin to weep. They don't look, they're not looking at me. And they begin to shake and they begin to weep. The angel is ministering to them. So you must know how to work with angels. But that is for uh, closed sessions. You're just saying that so that these, that clip can go viral. And uh, because we have cut the working system of God out of Christianity, which is angels. Are you guys with me? Some people are close to the touch of angels. So I can want to minister to somebody and you have ministering angels, okay? You want to minister to somebody and they can be totally close and opposed because they've been told some garbage. People don't even know it's angels. They just think it's the presence of God because the angel's bringing the presence. But because they are close, it's like the angel that I carry with me can't minister to them. A church service cannot be successful with angels being present. They are the ministers of God, ministering to Him and sent forth to minister unto us. Those who will inherit salvation, those, uh, those who have inherited salvation, that is us. They are ministering spirits, ministering angels to us. There are angels given to you to make sure you're clothed. There are angels given to you to make sure you have food to eat. Are you guys with me? And we will do a series probably on angels in the, in the next year or so again. But there's angels given to you for every task. There's angels given to you for business. There's angels given to you for money. And the Bible says they are given strength and speed by the word of God that we speak and command them. So the more we get into the word and the more we speak the word, the more angels are excelling on our behalf. And they are working on our behalf. They don't sleep. They don't eat. They just work. And they watch and they wait actually for your commands to be given to them. Are you guys with me? So, so with the results of the glory realm. I want to get into this. I want to give you just 10 or so results. It's going to be quick and we're going to minister and pray for you. And uh, results of the glory And this whole conference of what the Lord said to me is to focus on the manifest presence, focus on the glory, teach people how to go beyond just. Now there are churches that will focus just on the glory and they will never get teaching out. They'll never get proper teaching. So you have to have a balance, meaning, you know, uh, uh, um, 
I believe you have to have a balance of both the word and the power. Um, our church grows also because of teaching. But in the same way, people, people have to be receptive and know. You see, you can have a normal church service and teach and then suddenly, if the preacher knows how to, he can just discern, but wait, there's a shift or God wants to come in. And if the preacher knows how to do it, he can surrender at that moment. It can be in the middle of a teaching. And all of a sudden, it'll be the atmosphere will shift. And people will know how to receive if the, if the church is taught on how to do it. Are you guys with me? Robert, we just got many healings from online as well. Um, on Zoom, Ronaldo saying, I had very bad pain in my neck for two weeks. Right now, the pain has disappeared. Thank you, Lord, for my healing. Then we also have on Zoom as well, Edward saying, I have received my healing fire in my body and all around me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. On uh, Facebook, we have uh, Elizabeth saying, my shoulder pain is completely gone. Thank you, Jesus. Elizabeth Burtis is also saying, my back pain, it's gone, it's gone. I received my healing. We also have on YouTube, uh, Andre is saying, my wrist is healed. I can do push-ups. Uh, we have on Zoom, Christina saying, I received my healing. I've had back pain my whole life. And I've been sitting here for hours, it has been painful. Most of the pain is now gone and I am comfortable. I haven't been able to turn my head for two years due to severe neck pain. And it's affected my shoulders as well. I still have a little pain, but I haven't been able to turn my head this much for a very long time. Glory to God. Say with me, say the glory is the realm of eternity. Say it is the timeless realm. It is the unlimited realm. It is the realm of God. It is the realm, if you can know, as I said, how to go from faith. I know it's very simple what we preach, but a lot of people can't catch simplicity. If you know how to go from faith to the anointing and know, but there's much more, which is the glory of God. The glory must be entertained and recognized. A person must celebrate the glory in order for the glory to come into their lives. It must be recognized, discerned and perceived. Meaning the glory won't come into your house or your room unless you have the spiritual faculty to discern. But wait, there's a shift. Let me become more sensitive. It's called the dokematsu of the spirits. The sensitivity of the spirits. Are you guys with me? Some people can sit in a church and be carnal and natural and just like, uh, they, they're not, I mean, God can sit right next to them and they don't even know He is there. Then you have somebody else that can be sensitive to the move of the Spirit or to the unction of the Spirit. And because they have a sense, it's just a sensitivity in the Spirit. There's nothing technical to it. It's just a sensitivity. A lot of times people retain sin in their heart and they cannot be sensitive. They retain offense in their heart. They cannot be sensitive unforgiveness, bitterness. They cannot sense God's presence. And God's presence comes stronger upon a person when they are able to sense Him and draw upon Him. Are you guys with me? So the glory is kept in a place when people know how to pull in the Spirit or how to draw by their faith. So if you're sitting here, you must know how to pull in the Spirit. It is not necessarily a noise. It is a spiritual thing. It is where your Spirit is active and you just know how to place a demand or how to pull on something. Are you guys with me? So the glory of God, and I'm going to get into, I want to give you the results, but I'm just a little bit uh, recapping on the realm of glory. The glory is the timeless zone. It is the place which is not limited by time space or matter meaning in the glory you can close your eyes and see something you can stand by your eyes being closed in a house that you don't have yet you can stand in a building that you don't have yet even with a church what am i doing i'm standing in a building we don't have yet and i'm decoding and encoding and seeing it and visualizing it in the spirit these things are not witchcraft it's christianity People want to come with all the nonsense and third eye. Listen, get, be, stop calling God the devil. You're trying to work out so much what is evil, you can't figure out what is good. Just know one thing. There's a spiritual eye I have. 
whether it's a third eye, a fourth eye, a fifth, it doesn't matter. There's a spiritual eye that I have. There's eyes of the Spirit that I have that is opened in the glory. The devil is not going to make any Christian see. God is going to make a believer see. God is going to open up your eyes. Don't give the devil so much power and don't listen to this nonsense they are talking on the internet. It is young spiritual ones that don't know what they're talking about. They haven't seen, they wouldn't know what an angel is or even if Jesus is if he has to appear in front of them. All they know is witchcraft, witchcraft. You're operating in witchcraft. You're waving your hand like this as witchcraft. Shut up and do the work of the Holy Ghost. Just be quiet. And what it does, it makes people begin to criticize the move of God. And it births a people that begins to criticize the move of the Spirit. So don't listen to this nonsense where they talk about, when we speak about spiritual eyes, we speak about spiritual eyes. I couldn't care if it's my third eye or a fifth eye. According to the scripture, God is full of eyes. Oh, sorry, there's an angel that is full of eyes. And it's God's eye that moves back and forth on the earth. Are you guys with me? People like, I, I saw traveling. Listen, what God are we serving if you can by accidentally do something as witchcraft? You, I, I have never understood the common sense of some Christians. I have never understood the common sense of some Christians. Now, God is going to allow you to accidentally leave your body. Now you ask for, no. You move by the Spirit. You have a translation of the Spirit. You have transportation of the Spirit. Translation is different to transportation. Then you have moving in the Spirit. Are you guys with me? So the glory of God is a timeless zone. It is a spaceless zone it is matterless it is no time space or matter the glory of God is God so when his glory comes in you don't look up or pray for God to come and God is there his angels is there it is the realm of eternity it is the realm of the manifest presence it is the realm of his character his nature and his ability it is the realm of his provision his weight and his splendor the weight, the kavot, the splendor, the doxa. It is the realm of His visibility that is the Shekinah. Are you guys with Him? When Moses saw the Shekinah glory on the tent, he couldn't even enter the tent. When His Shekinah will come into a place, fear will come in upon your heart. You will know that God is there. Once His kavod comes in, it is a weight that comes on you. And you feel you need to sit or you need to get on your knees, but they say weight that rests upon you. When His kavod comes upon you, it is favor He's giving you. If you can carry His kavod, it is where wealth and prosperity begins to come to you. May the glory be your... Listen, the glory is the atmosphere of heaven as the air is the atmosphere of the earth as the water is the environment of the fish so air is the environment and the atmosphere of the earth and the heavens the glory is the atmosphere of the heavens as your natural body breathes in this air your spiritual man breathes in the glory it comes alive in the glory your spirit is being awakened in the glory it has a resuscitation upon in the realm of the glory. You become awake. All of a sudden, you realize I can respond in a sermon again. I can get up from my chair and I can respond because your spirit is alive. Are you guys with me? The glory of God is the revelation of God's presence. It's the demonstration of God Himself. It is the character of His presence. In the glory of God, age is no longer a factor. Race is not a factor. Abilities and gifts are no longer a factor. Whether you can sing or not sing, the glory is there. Whether you can preach or not preach, whether you have the gift of healing or not, people getting healed. It goes beyond the gift of a man. And it goes to God beginning to Him to do it Himself. 
Are you guys with me? In the glory of the voice, sound of voices and many waters you will begin to hear. It is the place where there's angels and elders and creatures that you will hear them singing and feel them moving. It's like John that said, I was taken up into the throne room of God. And I heard the voices of many, I heard many voices and thunderings and lightnings that begin to come in. It is a place where strange sounds will begin to come in. When the glory comes in, there's an atmosphere that shifts. You'll be in your room and you're praying. You can hear cars drive outside or somebody. And all of a sudden, when the glory comes in, it's a dead silence. It's like you are isolated or insulated from the outside world. You are in a bubble of another atmosphere. Are you guys with me? In the glory of God, there's no more performance. In the glory of God... Your spiritual eyes are open, as I said, and the veil is torn. You can look into another world. In the glory of God, you can see your future. The glory of God is heaven manifested on the earth. The glory of God, if it is in your room, if it is in the church, you must know heaven is there. The glory of God is perfect peace. Are you guys with me? Say with me, perfect peace. When the glory enters, you will have certain things. So I want to give you just a few results. Go with me to Ezekiel 1 verse 1. Ezekiel 1 verse 1. Let's abrid in a mambrosida. And we don't even have to preach. The presence of God is so strong. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month of the day of the month, as I was among the captives, say with me captives, listen to this, by the river Shebar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. In the glory, the first thing that will happen is an open heaven will come over your life, and you will begin to have visions if the glory is on you, your spiritual eyes will be open and you'll have visions. Are you guys with me? You'll have visions. Ezekiel said, the heavens were opened and when the heavens were opened, I had visions of God. But think of it like this. He said, I was a captive. Uh, you know, it goes on and it speaks of how he was an exile, which I'm not going to go right now, exile from Babylon. But it says that he was a captive. And he was in exile, which basically means to be stripped, uncovered, and to be naked. The glory requires your face to be unveiled. The Bible says we are staring into the glory of the Lord, like in a mirror with an unveiled face, beholding the glory, being changed from one image, from one state of the glory into another, into that image which we are beholding. But what does it say? Say with me, unveiled face. God requires the masks to come off for you to encounter the glory. Are you guys with me? When it says that Ezekiel was an exile of Babylon, a captive, that the word exile means that he was uncovered, stripped and exposed. The glory of God will make you feel vulnerable. It'll expose your spiritual condition. Some people can worship and weep under the glory while others are becoming stiff and they don't know how to respond. They're looking like this. Your spiritual condition is exposed. You don't even know Jesus. If you knew Him, your spirit would connect and you'll be able to minister with Him and allow Him to minister to you. And you'll be caught up in the glory. A lot of people are like, they don't know how to respond in the glory. The glory of God exposes your spiritual condition. It exposes your spiritual relationship with God. Say with me, open heaven. Say visions. Listen, to some this is given and to some it's just not given. But yet it is available for everyone. It is available for every Christian that has the ability to say, you know, I'm going to get my heart right. I want to get my focus right. And I'm just focusing on pressing into Him. Go to 2 Corinthians 12 verse 1. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 1 in the King James. We're still by the first point. That you will have open heavens and visions 
Paul is saying, listen to this. He says, it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Put in the Amplified for me. Listen to this. True, there is nothing to be gained by it, but as I am obligated to boast, I will go on. Say with me, go on. To visions and revelations of the Lord. The glory allows you to press into a realm and to go on with visions and revelations. It is the realm where you receive visions. The Bible says with Joel 2 verse 28 that in the last days I will pour out my spirit and I will pour out my spirit upon your sons and your daughters. Uh, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions and your men your men I'll pour out my spirit, your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. But I will pour out my spirit and they will see visions. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And even on your men servants, your maid servants, will I pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. So when the glory of God is upon you, it is open heavens, it is visions, and it's the spirit of prophecy that comes forth. When you're full of God, you'll be able to have something to give to somebody. Prophetic. You'll be able to speak about their future. You'll be able to say God's intention to about them. You'll be able to share God's heart towards them. Are you guys with me? So say open heavens, visions, and prophecy. Open heavens, visions, revelations, prophecy. That is the first round or the first things, the results that you tap into when it comes to the glory. The second one, let me go read Deuteronomy. Put on Amplify, Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. I want you to catch this. If you will listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all His commandments, which I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings, say with you, these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you heed the voice of the Lord. Say the blessings shall overtake me. There's an overtaking of blessings where it becomes too much for you. When it is a pouring out of heaven and you say, God, but this is too much blessings or this is too much riches. This is too much wealth. I don't know if you understand. We are being blessed. Listen, in the New Testament we say we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. But its spiritual blessings must translate into natural blessings. Where the glory comes, it manifests from the spirit to the natural. Are you guys with me? Let's go to verse 12. Listen to this. Verse 12 of Deuteronomy 28. Quickly guys, verse 12. The Lord shall open to you His good treasury, the heavens. I'm going to read it again. He shall open to you His good treasury, the heavens. Let me change the language. He shall open to you His treasure chest, His bank account of the heavens to give the rain of your land in its season and to bless the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. You shall not have debts. You will have wealth to lend to nations. He will open the treasure of heaven, the treasuries of heaven to you. Say the treasure of heaven. Say the bank account of heaven will be open to me. This is the second sign of the glory. Say prosperity. Every blessing that there is, it happens in the glory. Do not underestimate the ability to receive blessings of God in an atmosphere like this. Are you guys with me? When I say that in a place like this or in the glory, there's no time. When you sow in the glory, there's no time when it comes to your reaping. The richness of the glory determines that there's no time in the spirits. 
How you do it by faith will determine how you can reap from it. So the second result of the glory is blessings and the treasury of heaven, which is prosperity. It is God's will to prosper you. It is God's will for you to be blessed. It is His will for you to be debt free. When the Kavot glory of God comes in, it speaks of His prosperity and His wealth and His riches. Where His Kavot is, there is riches there. It speaks of the weight of gold that comes in. Are you guys with me? The third result of the glory. <laughs> we see how Obed Edom took the ark into his house. And Obed Edom was a man that was known for his poverty. That his name he wasn't known, but he was a poor man. Uh, we see that as we study history and scholars put together that Obed Edom was a poor person. The ark was dropped at his house, not because he was anyone significant. It was the closest person that was there. They could just leave the ark by because people were beginning to get killed. Because they were touching the glory. And they left it by Obed Edom. And then God chose because he carried his glory and he had his glory in his house. That the Bible says his whole household was blessed. Everything he touched was blessed. And that his name began to travel through the cities to the nations until it reached the lips of a king. That the third result of the glory of God is God will make a non-entity a celebrity. Somebody whose name is not known, once the glory comes upon you, people will take notice. There's a favor that rests upon you, that comes upon you, that will be seen by people. People will be able to see the glory of God upon you. The Bible says, arise and shine and let your light come forth. For the glory of God has risen upon you and is shining upon you. Once the glory comes, it makes your face shine. When Moses came down from the mountain, his face shone with the brightness of the sun. When Jesus was on the mountaintop and the glory came on him, his face shone shown with the brightness. The glory will make your face shine and it will make people take notice of you. That is where you can get favor in the workplace, favor with people. That's why somebody that truly walks in the glory of God will have favor. Things will be open for them. Are you guys with me? The fourth result of the glory. Go Isaiah 60 verse 11. Isaiah 60 11. And put in the Let's read what it says there. And your gates, say my gates. Let me say this, you are a gate. When the Bible speaks of gates, it's speaking of individuals. It's the Bible says, lift up your gates. Lift up your heads, your gates. And welcome the King of glory in. So gates have heads, okay. Lift up your heads, O oh gates. Gates are people. You are an open heaven. You are a gatekeeper for your family. You can decide to open for the glory. Where's the kingdom? So you must have a gate that have the ability to open for the king of glory to come out. The moment you receive the kingdom and you receive the Lord is inside of you. It's not a matter of Him coming down from heaven. It's a matter of Him coming out inside of you out and filling your house, filling your family. It is a matter of being a gate that can open up for rivers of living water to begin to flow out. So listen to this. And your gates, say my gates, shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night. Hmm, say 24 hours that men may bring to you the wealth of the nations and their kings led in procession. Listen, the fourth result of the glory is that you will have 24 hour open doors in your life. You're not going to be praying for a business, for a door to be opened, for a job a description, for a job to be opened when you're applying for a job. No, no, no. You are the door. Jesus is the door. You are a gate. And as you are open, kings will bring wealth to you. Say open doors. So the glory will open doors for you. The fifth result. Let's go to Psalm 91. Let's read what Psalm 91 says. 
Lera nu Braske er redonuske Dena mandele Dando Som når det var Lera nu King James, let me read it out of the New King James. Alabradondo sedaende, leranorondo. Where are we now? Fifth, the fifth one. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The glory will bring the shadow of God upon your life. The shadow of God upon your life is the highest form of power. It is a Pekahitso power. It is where Peter walked and his shadow fell upon people and people were healed. Demons were coming out by his shadow and it's speaking of God's shadow. So when the Bible is speaking in the New Testament about Peter's shadow, uh, there's another word where it says that the power of God overshadowed Mary. Epikahitsod Mary. It is the glory of God that comes upon it, gave cause it to have birth and gave birth to the Christ. Peter had the Epikahitso, the shadow of God upon him, and his shadow was infused with the anointing. And anybody that was lying that his shadow touched were getting healed. So the glory will bring the shadow of God upon your life. Number six. Let me re- carry on reading. Let's go to verse two. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you, say deliver, from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings He shall take refuge. He shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is your refuge even the most high your dwelling place no evil say no evil shall befall me say no plague shall come near my dwelling the glory will bring protection deliverance and healing to you say with me protection say deliverance say healing when the glory is on you there must be healing there must be protection No thief can come near you. You'll see your neighbor's house being broken into, but not yours. Or they'll try to break in by yours and something will scare them. No disease shall touch you. As far as I know, COVID didn't touch any of our members in terms of death. Are you guys with me? Now, it doesn't mean you will never suffer. It just means that the glory is your rear God. There's a realm that you can walk in. Where the Bible says, where the lion is not tread. And the fierce lion has not been there. It is a place where the enemy has not tread. It is a place where you can walk that is perfect peace and safety. There'll be persecutions and so on. That's fine. And you can be killed for the sake of Christ. That's fine. But it's perfect peace. Even martyrs, when they were martyred in the New Testament, in the early church, they were singing praises. Some were laughing while they were being burnt. There's a place in the glory where you're covered and protected, where your body is being translated in the glorified body. Are you guys with me? So the glory of the six, this is the sixth result, will bring protection, deliverance and healing. The seventh results. The glory will bring ascension. Say with me, ascension. The moment you touch the realm of the glory, you'll be taken up higher. Go to Revelation 4 verse 1. You'll be taken up higher. It is a place of heights. 
you'll come out of that place and you will look at other people and they will seem small to you. It's not because you have pride. It is because you were lifted to a higher place. You live from a higher realm. After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. Say a door. The glory opens up doors for you in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here. And then once you are up here, I will show you things which must take place after this. Say with me, the glory brings ascension. This is the seventh result. But the eighth one is, He will show you things to come. The moment the glory is, comes upon you, you'll be able to see your future. You'll be able to see your destiny. You'll be able to see what will happen tomorrow, what will happen next week. And nothing will take you by surprise. Even if it is negative. Listen, there is a realm like this. Don't question it. Your, your, your lack of faith and unbelief will question this. Are you guys with me? The moment you touch this realm, things don't catch you off guard or by surprise. You can see the future. It's like Joseph once he put on the glory, the mantle, which is the coat of God, the coat of many colors, which is the same robe when God, when the Bible says in Isaiah 6, that his robe filled the temple over and over. When Jacob, when, when, when not Jacob, sorry, Joseph, when Joseph put on that robe, all of a sudden he had a dream and he could see his end. The moment you put on the glory, you can see your end, you can see your destiny. You can see the call of God upon your life. Nothing takes you by surprise. Are you guys with me? Even though many times I say, you know, we have never worked for what I say, worked for what we have. I mean, we have worked very hard, but it is in the glory of God. It is what I'm doing is I'm simply living what God has preordained. We have seen the building already. I've seen this church already. Uh, 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 I think I just met Pastor Chris like 15 years ago or something. And I said, I'll plant a church in Pretoria, in Centurion. This was before I even had my ministry. Because the glory of God allows you to see things. Allows you to align your spirit to it. It doesn't matter if you are living in a third world country. It doesn't matter if the economy is what it is. If the glory is on you, you will be blessed. The Bible says kings will come and give you money. Doors will be opened. Are you guys with me? The ninth result. Maybe I'll do 11. Uh, say holiness. The glory of God will always bring a desire for holiness. You will leave the glory realm and you will feel like you want to live a more holy life. It will pull you to purity. It will pull you to holiness. The Bible says when the angels, the seraphim, one way, when two wings cover his face, two wings his body, two wings cover his feet, the seraphims, they were singing and worshiping. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, worthy. Is it holy, holy, so holy, holy, holy. It's holiness that comes into the glory. When Moses was by the burning bush, which is the glory of God, and you see the Shekinah there, you see the doxa in action there, and when he saw the Shekinah, it pushed him to holiness. And he said, I must take off my, my uh, the Lord said to him, take off your sandals, for the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. The moment you get to the glory, holiness will come into your heart. You will have a desire not to do anymore what you used to do. To not live a carnal life like you used to live. Not to do sins because it's the glory that does it. A lot of people try to do it by their own works. It doesn't carry the same power. Number 10. The glory will bring angelic interaction. Say it will bring angels. Go to Psalm 91 verse 11. Psalm 91 verse 11. For He shall give His angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Put in the King, go on back. Put in the King James. I want to see something. 
Let's put an amplified. Oh no, I'm not going to get the right translation now. No, don't worry. I want to get the translation, but it's not going to be on here. Let me see if it is here. It's not going to be on here. But basically it says this, For He will give His angels special charge over you to accompany you and to guard you and to preserve you in all your ways. So you see a guarding angel. Go verse 12. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And that has nothing to do with the call of God. That is just a guardian angel that's given to you. That will protect you. That will cover you. And the moment you understand the glory realm, but all these promises of Psalm 91 is locked up in the first two verses, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, shall abide under the glory. So he who dwells in the glory, these promises are for him. Angels are with him and will cover him and protect him. Doors will be opened, blessings, treasuries of heaven will be poured out upon them. Let me give you 11th result, the last one. Go Luke 21 verse 27. Luke 21 verse 27. La rosca abre que redena maros que daya zerano. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, say a cloud, with great transcendence and overwhelming power and all His kingly glory, majesty and splendor. I understand this is the coming of Jesus Christ, but the cloud and the glory will always reveal Jesus to you. The moment you encounter the glory of God, you will see His character come into play. You will meet Him. Nothing will deviate from the character of Christ. Are you guys with me? It will draw you closer to Him. It will reveal Jesus Christ to you. Him as a person, the glory is God's person. It is His character, character, His nature, His ability, His ways. What is His character? The character of God is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscience. It is His goodness, His mercy, His graciousness, His loving kindness. His long-suffering, it is the characteristics of God. The moment you tap into the glory, you tap into the character of God. You become gracious, long-suffering, loving-kindness, merciful. You carry the goodness of God upon you. So with you, the results of the glory realm. This is when you access this realm. How did we access this realm tonight? We praised until the spirit of praise was, until the spirit of praise came and then we worshipped when the spirit of worship came. And then we carried on until the glory became tangible and you would feel Him like goosebumps all over you. Are you guys with me? Which means that the glory is present and then all you do, you don't even have to scream anymore. You don't have to shout. You just stand and receive whatever He has for you. Visions will come with it, these healings, whatever they might be. But you can just stand in the glory and receive what He has for you. But we pressed in from praise, into worship, to stand in a place of glory. Hmm. Hmm. Let me go to Go with me to Haggai chapter number 2 In the waters First See from where. Let's go from verse six.
Haggai chapter number 2 verse 6. For thus says the Lord of hosts, say with you, thus says God. This is His word. Yet, once more, one more time, in a little while, I will shake and make tremble the starry heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry lands. And I will shake all nations, and the desires and the precious things of all the nations shall come in. And I will fill this house with splendor. Say with you, with splendor. And another translation says, I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord. Verse 8, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former glory, says the Lord of hosts. And this place I will give peace, say peace, and prosperity, say prosperity, say peace and prosperity, says the Lord, meaning the 12th result of the glory is there will be perfect peace and rest upon your life, which is prosperity. And it's amazing that the Bible says peace and prosperity. Listen to me, wealth and prosperity, if it comes from God, it'll give you peace. A blessing that doesn't come from God is a curse, but a blessing that comes from Him will give perfect peace. <laughs> and the latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former. And I shall shake this nation one more time. I shall shake this place one more time. All tribes, all nations. By what? Say my glory. It's His glory that will shake nations. It is His glory that will shake your family. It is His glory that will shake your households. It is the glory. It is when you preach from faith to the anointing, to the glory of God. Say, stand your feet, stand your feet. Say, I receive. I carry the glory. Where the glory is, the silver is, the gold is. Just raise your hands gently to him, just raise your hands. Braska arekena mambroska redada maskede. Those online, I also want you to raise your hand. Surrender to Him online where you are right now. We're going to move and we're going to go into the glory of God. We're going to lay hands and part too many. But before we do that, I want us to set the atmosphere. I want us to get a best offering. We haven't taken up tithes and offering yet. Those online, I want you to challenge yourself. Give into the glory of God tonight. The silver is His. The gold is His. As I said, as we give in this realm, trust me, this is places where my wife and I have sowed. We would travel nations just to be in places where I could sense that this atmosphere is. It is not many places. I would look at that and I would empty my accounts. I would em empty all my credit cards. God is my witness. And I would go lay it down. I never looked what the need was. Because giving into a need is limited. Giving into the glory is by honor. There's no, there's no amount on honor. There's no amount on the glory. There's only an amount on need. We can say we need a sound system. We need this. We need that. No, there's always an amount to that. 100,000 or 1 million and then it's met. But when it comes to the glory, God will challenge and stretch your spirit. Those watching online, God will stretch your spirit. And I found at the moment I gave a certain amount, I could never give less than that when I wanted to sow sacrificially. Because it was no longer a sacrifice because I've done it before. But in the natural, there's no way I could even afford or do it but it is because I sow an amount in the spirit that stretches my spirit and prepares my natural body and my life to enter into that realm so you can only enter into a place of the capacity of your spirit that is why many people battle with poverty because they've never enlarged their giving beyond just a tithe or offering they've never given to a place where they want to be at 
if I can tell people what is the key out of poverty and I've seen poverty and I've seen wealth and trust me wealth is much better than poverty poverty has no God in it I said in New York I said the God cannot be found in poverty don't be silent because in New York we're preaching and people get silent when we mention poverty I said listen there's nothing glorious of poverty come to Africa there's nothing glorifying God in poverty nothing God does not live where poverty is his very name of his glory which is Kavot is speaking of his wealth where his glory is it'll be poured out to you and many of you will be challenged to give some will give tithe and offering some will be challenged to stretch their spirits and some giving into the glory and I, I know without a doubt you see in the glory you don't even have to believe you will know there'll be a knowing in your spirit it is a moment of faith that is why it is important to give in this moment of faith because the moment you leave the service, that faith is going to drop. And if you give into that faith, you prepare yourself to get to there. Those who are online, if you're ready, I don't want to stretch this out. If you're ready to give right now, you'll see the details on the screen for national, uh, local and international details. It'll change. It gets ready to give. Let us know if you have given. Don't give to anything, anybody that puts anything in the comments. Only on the screen, please. And uh, if you have given, please let us know. And we're going to pray. And as we pray tonight and lay hands, we're going to pray for everybody online as well. There's no distance in the spirit. Of those in this church, in the house here, if you're ready to give right now before we're going to pray for importation, we're going to lay hands on everybody. I want you to get your seed ready, your offering ready. You'll see that there is an envelope on your seat or you can use all the details on the screen. We also have credit card machines in the back. And after this, we're going to go into a song. We're going to begin to worship and then we're going to begin to minister. We're going to lay hands on everybody. We're going to pack the chairs. But I want us to enter into the presence of God first for a moment after we've given. But during that time, you can go to the back with the credit cards and they'll have the credit card machines. Then you can give up. If you're ready to give, just lift up your seat in the air. A lot of people are like, eh, but you know, every night we're giving. It is fine. During Pentecost, portals are open. During Passover, portals are open. During Tabernacles, portals are open. These are set times and seasons where God allows a portal to be open where He receives more than another time. It is very biblical. It is a time when the Israelites would even save up to give during the time of feasts. It is a set time in heaven. So your seed given during this time is not lost. It is a portal in heaven. This is a spiritual thing. This is a spiritual matter. I pray right now that poverty will be broken. That every curse of lack, every sense of lack, every need they have will be covered, God. Because as they give now out of honor, not out of need, that it will be covered by your glory. That it will be cleared by your glory, every form of death. That there will be supernatural death cancellation in this atmosphere, in this glory, in this presence. We command death cancellation. I command the spirit of poverty to be removed from their lives. In Jesus' name, to be displaced from their lives. And angels to begin to minister to them and bring finances to them. Those who are watching online, may poverty be broken. Those who are saying, I'm supporting this ministry, I'm giving this ministry, I'm even giving this moment. May the glory of God come into your houses. May the glory of God saturate your houses. May there be supernatural financial miracles in Jesus' mighty name. Even in this moment, there'll be healing taking place, miracles will taking place. Families and households that will receive miracles and deliverance. I command it in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, everyone that is in this place and those that are giving, may importation of the glory take place tonight. May the level of importation go according to their faith that is right here, right now. And may this seed be a photograph of their faith. Those who are giving online, may your seed in your giving be a photograph of the faith. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Come on, you can come forward so long and give. You can also go back to the machines, credit card and give them. I see those who are already given online. Thank you so much. I see all the comments coming in.
Albertus, can the two of you come? Albertus, next to him. Come stand here. Bras, ke breke, red on ons, ke dede, brat on ons, ke dan. The Lord showed me something very specific. And I want him to touch with you with his glory. But I saw the Lord saying, I'm going to make a way where there seems to be no way. And Bijan, there's an angel that is coming alongside you, which will open up doors for finances like you've not seen. But the Lord is saying that as I give you my glory, as I entrust you with my glory, that I'll open up doors and I've caused the eyes of both of you to see a lot of things. And I've caused a lot of weight to come upon you. For the Lord is saying it's only the beginning for what is going to take place. And the Lord is saying, Mijan, even the visions that you've had and all these things that you have, and you have never deviated. For I've seen that your heart has never deviated. The Lord is saying you will see importation that will come, says the Spirit of the Lord. But you'll have and see angelic assistance of finances. But the Lord is saying, I'm going to cause you to tap into the glory. The Lord is saying, Albertus, I saw that prayer and prayers that has gone forth regarding a certain issue. The Lord is saying, see how I will bring swift deliverance and swift clearance. But there's an inheritance that is coming to you, says the Spirit of God, that is not going to be withheld and you're going to flow into this inheritance. For the Lord is saying, stay close to my glory, stay close to my presence. For the enemy will even bring and try to entice and try to pull, but it shall not be accomplished because I saw the hand of God even on both of you where you have cho- where you could have chosen to remove yourself and you could have chosen to depart or deviate but you haven't and this night I pray for a fresh importation of a mantle of the Kavot glory give me my jacket there stand up, stand up, stand up May there be, may you experience a new realm. May you understand spiritual things, says the Lord. May you understand spiritual things. May you understand spiritual things. May you understand spiritual dynamics. But everything that you have given into the glory, nothing is lost, says the Lord. For I'm standing and I'm seeing 40 years into the future. And the Lord is saying, you will see how high I will take you. And I'll open up doors of business and ministry. And the glory that shall rest. I pray right now for importation of the Kavot glory. The Shekinah. That you will see Him. And that you will say, my eyes have beheld the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name.
Jesus out of you the last three weeks or four weeks? Okay, then I have in the spirit because I had this vision the whole time and I thought I did. Because I was taken into this spiritual place. The whole conference, the Lord said, and I'm like, but I prophesied of him two weeks ago. And I released the word. Because I was taken into a vision. The Lord said to me, the things that the enemy has tried to deviate and even things that you thought is going to go one way, it's going to go another way. Because there has been a hunger for the move of God. I, have, I do not see as man sees, says the Lord. I look upon the heart. And I saw this dimension of glory that you carry, that the Lord is taking you through a light affliction. But it's only but for a moment, says the Lord so that the eternal weight of glory will be imparted to you. And I saw how you're going to enter and how the Lord has a ministry that is prepared for you, even though many might think that it is not. And I saw the Lord saying to me, I have a ministry for him. And I saw this in the last month as if I stood right there in front of you. The Lord said, I've taken off a cup. I've taken and removed a limiter, a blockage where our rivers of living water is going to come because you have died to certain things. And the Lord is saying, now there'll be a resurrection and you will see my glory. You have even looked at your father and you have celebrated him and you have honored him and you have celebrated him. And in the meantime, what you didn't know is that there was importation that was taking place and there was things that was being opened up and it will be a sudden work. It will be suddenly where the hand of the Lord will come upon you, says the Lord. And I pray right now that there will be a mantle that will be on you. Even as I put this jacket on you. Whatever gift, whatever mantle, whatever office, whatever grace, whatever glory and dimension He has for you. And has prepared for you. That will be unlocked this night. In Jesus' mighty name. of God in Jesus name let us worship let's worship There's a man with a blue shirt, colored blue shirt, right there, yes. Just stand there, raise your hands for me. Are you with your wife here, or are you you're alone? Oh, you also, <laughs> right behind you. I put both of you up, you, you, yes, sir, and you in the back. I actually saw you in the back, but keep both of your hands up because I saw the hand of the Lord on you as well. And I'll prophesy to both. The guy in the back, come here for me, come to the front, come to the front. Bring him to the front. Bring him to the front. 
Priska brekere donoske tenere brother and mother bena. The angel of the Lord has pointed you out for me. Because he's going to do something very specific for you. I saw business things that was lost or things like this, opportunities or things that the enemy has tried to remove or take away. That uh, prosperity that has been taken away. If the Lord is saying, tell him, there will be things that will be established. I saw something like houses being taken. I'm looking, I don't know why I'm seeing something that in the spirit that hasn't come that is supposed to come. Breska roduska breke na mambres kete lebe na maske te kataya de la brayo lebra konos kere de lebre de la brados kete leke na mambros kataya. It is like I'm looking at like somebody who's working with finances, and I'm seeing like uh, uh, I'm just look, having this image of somebody working with finances trying to work things out and stuff like that. And the Lord is saying to me that tell him a new season is coming, a new a freshness is coming. Old things have passed away, but all things have become new. For where the enemy has desired things for you to be taken and things to become chaos. I shall bring a freshness and a newness of life. There has been many that has prayed for you. There's even ministry that is upon the family or ministry that is supposed to be, that is supposed to be coming down like a stream, like a river, like a flood. And you will see this in your coming out of your belly and you will see you entering into a place even of ministering to others in a great way. But the Lord is about to restore things that the enemy tried to break down. And the Lord is going to bring restoration. He's going to touch your heart. And then I see the Lord touching a physical body. I saw the Lord showing me that where the enemy is trying to bring sickness or even infirmity is bringing healing in the body. But even right now I pray. As the angel of the Lord pointed you out to me. May the glory of the Lord come upon you. May there be a freshness, a newness, no guilt and no condemnation from the past. Every word of accusation against you be removed in Jesus' mighty name. Touch his life. Come here for me. Give me your hands, sir. The Lord showed me as I'm standing here, family that's going to come around you, family that is going to do certain things in a good way that's going to come around you. Where the enemy wanted to attack the family, there's many things that you were supposed to be entering into. I saw the enemy coming against the family, but I saw the Lord saying to me, I'm bringing a restoration, I'm bringing healing, and I'm restoring a voice of honor where family will even honor you in a greater way. Because the enemy has tried to bring words of dishonor. The enemy has tried to come into the words of some that has tried to bring dishonor. The Lord is saying, your seed, seed will serve me. Your seed, seed will praise me and your seed, seed will worship me. You and your house will serve the Lord. For your days are not over, and days are being lengthened. But I see the blessing and the prosperity of God coming upon your life. I speak healing in your body and those around you in the physical body. I pray specifically for your heart. I pray specifically for the blood. In Jesus' mighty name. For the Lord is saying, I'm going to visit you, son, in dreams. I'm going to come and visit and speak with you in dreams, says the Spirit of the Lord. I pray for the glory of God to rest upon him right now. Touch his body, awaken his body, renew his body. In Jesus' name. Let's carry on worship. Let's pack up all the chairs. If the ushers can help us, and let's do a ring of fire, guys. And uh, we're going to come and lay hands and impart to you. Stay hungry.
Zoom. I hear the Lord speaking to me about prophecy for you. Heals the temple. This is what I hear the Lord say to me when I was just looking at you and I glad a glimpse over you. As you're standing there, you can just focus upon Him. The presence of God is going to make a way. The Lord said to me, the breakthrough that you required, that you spoke to me about, I command the breath of fresh air to come on there. But then I can't deny, but I'll keep seeing a healing that is needed. I don't know if I personally told you this as well, but this thing is in my spirit the whole time. A physical needing, whether it is you or with your family, but I see a infirmity, a sickness, a healing that is required. I don't know why this thing is in front of me. And I'm looking at the body part. I'm looking at the like the chest, the lungs, the stomach. I'm looking at that part of the body. And it is, uh, it is, there is a healing that is coming forth where I saw that an angel is pointing this out for me. I prophesy that divine healing will be your portion or this one that I'm praying for that is close in the family, close. Like a wife or a, uh, a in the family, one of the children or something like this. But I command that healing to take place. I command the breakthrough that I saw, that a way, the Lord says, tell him I'm making a way for him in the wilderness and a forest in the desert and rivers in the wilderness i'm making a way for him because this is the place where the hungry dwell says the spirit of the lord for as you are hungry 
as you are thirsty spiritually. See how you will dwell in this place where I'll turn a wilderness into a forest, a desert into a spring of water and a river, says the Spirit of God. For even this property that you've been focusing on, this land and property, there is another one, another thing that is coming through as well. I saw another thing that the Spirit of the Lord is going to highlight on for you. I saw something where there is, I don't know if it is in the city, it is a little bit like out of the place where you're staying or something like that. I saw the finger of God touching this area and I saw a breakthrough coming for you. I also saw a line or a door of inheritance that is opening up of something that is locked up. And right now I pray by the Spirit of the living God that will come through the airwaves, through the television set, through the computer where you're watching right now, that the glory will touch you as evidence of this word. In Jesus' name, touch Him, touch Him, touch Him, touch Him. Andrew's family or Edward family, Edward family. Just, just go, go, go for me that I can see. Edward, Edward and family. Put them on. a daughter in the family or something like a, a daughter or a, a, a I see a young female I don't know why but uh, when I was worshiping and I looked at you I'm seeing the image of a young female it's going to be connected to the family or something like that. I don't know if it is going to be married in or something like that. But uh, uh, I also saw that the Lord is saying to me, as we were worshiping and I looked at your faces, so the Lord was highlighting you for me. He said, pray for the health fully. And the point people that I'm pointing at now is mainly also health and deliverance. The Lord told me deliverance is coming to this family health is coming to this family but in the area of debt or in the area of something that is a financially binding here i saw a covenant that is going to be established i saw the lord's covenant being established for you and right now i saw angels being released of healing but not only that there's a call of god upon your life there's an anointing upon your life is a gift in you to move in revelation, to move in teaching, to move in healing. And right now, I pray for the gifts of healing to be imparted to you. In Jesus' name, the glory is over me as I'm speaking about this right now. I pray that as this glory is on me, that it will come upon you. This gift of healing, this teaching gift to be imparted to you. In Jesus' name, take it into your hands that this ministry or this anointing that is for you be it released to him right now in Jesus name touch him, touch him, touch him, touch him, touch him, touch him, touch him may the glory be like weights may the glory come upon him tangibly and I speak healing and deliverance into this family in Jesus name on big guys I'm just gonna go quick through some names Karina 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 raise your hands to the Lord raise your hands to the Lord Karina can you hear me the Lord said to me this to tell her the thing that she's been praying for when it comes to deliverance that I'm gonna bring a great healing a great deliverance where the enemy has tried to wreck relationships in the area to try to harden and hurt your heart 
I pray right now that there'll be deliverance, that there'll be healing, that there'll be inner healing in the name of Jesus Christ. That that thing which you've been crying out for the Lord for, the Lord is saying, even this night, my daughter, I'm anointing you. And I'm anointing you to do certain extraordinary words. I'm touching your voice and I'm anointing your voice, says the Spirit of God. Amy Gabriel, Amy Gabriel, there's a season coming for you that is opening up and a door that is opening up. For the Lord is saying, see, I'm doing a new thing, but I'm bringing a new relationships. And I'm speaking of extended relationships. I'm not speaking now of romantic or anything like that. I'm seeing a new season. I'm seeing new relationships. But I see something that is going to be established. For the Lord is saying to me that a work is going to be need to be done. And a work that I've called you even many years ago, daughter, says the Lord. Many, many years ago, many years ago, you've had visions and you've pursued this thing. And there's a pregnancy in the Spirit that is taking place, says the Spirit of the Lord. And I'm going to begin to show you and reveal you. But think something is opening up because the enemy has tried to delay and try to limit and try to hinder a work and try to hinder a ministry. For the Lord is saying, I'm opening up this door when it comes in the area of ministry. And I'm even seeing like something like property connected to ministry. And I'm seeing like the spirit of intercession that is coming upon you in a great way for a door to be opened. For the Lord is saying, I'm going to use your voice. I'm going to use your ability in the area of ministry, says the Spirit of God. But I'm looking a property that I'm standing in front, whether this property is going to be released to you, whether this property is going to be opened or debt is going to be removed from this property. But I'm standing in front of a property that the Lord is saying, tell her the promise is coming for property, says the Spirit of the Lord. I see different lines touching different parts in Florida or lines touching part I think uh, Florida goes like up as a state I see different lines touching Florida and I saw how the Lord is saying tell her I'm opening up certain doors to do certain ministry things or certain things in the area or in that state and that will be a sign that things are opening up for her for I see angels in the family. Now when I was looking at you and I saw angels, I also saw angels in the Edwards family. I saw an angel standing behind there by the Edwards family. And I saw this angel beginning to pour oil. And I saw this angel standing by your Amy, touching your voice, says the Spirit of God. Come on, let's give him a praise offering, church. Raise your hands to the Lord, church. Myself, Pastor Stephen is going to come and pray for you. I'm not sure if my wife is here or not, otherwise she can join. But uh, myself and Pastor Stephen is going to come pray for you, lay hands on you um, with oil. Uh, say with me, I receive tonight impartation. I want you to receive healing as well in any area. I want to ask Pastor Stephen to pray over the mic right now for healing as well. Or pray for prayer of healing for importation. Amen. Just lift your hands. If you have any sickness in your body, I want you to lift your hands to heaven right now. 
Father, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, every sickness under your sound of my voice, every spirit of infirmity, death and numb and kundalini, I bind your works right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I charge the angels to do the work of the word of Lord. I command healing to come upon them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone in this, in this building and everyone that's on Zoom or YouTube that struggles with the spirit of depression and the spirit of heaviness, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we pray tonight for you, that the spirit of heaviness and depression shall depart from you that the spirit of the joy of the lord will come upon you that fresh wine will come upon you from this moment in the name of jesus christ i command every spirit of death to go right now every spirit of premature death i execute you out of their lives right now in the name of jesus christ i command you to leave god's people right now in the name of jesus christ i speak healing right now in the name of jesus christ i command life to be i command life to be right now in the name of Jesus Christ and every spirit of fear and anxiety every spirit of suicide and every lying voice that's telling God's people that it is too late that they're not good enough right now in the name of Jesus Christ I command you to shut up right now Father, I pray that your grace will come upon your people right now. I pray that the angels will not just stand around them and see how the enemy comes against them, but let them turn against the enemy and destroy every work that they have done in the name of Jesus Christ and every spirit of diabetics and every spirit of death. I command you to go right now in Jesus' name. Every family and every generational curse, I break your powers right now in Jesus' name. Every word of death that is spoken of them and every curse of poverty, I break your powers over their lives right now in the name of Jesus Christ and if you receive that give God a praise right now now that importation will come upon them as myself Pastor Stefan my wife is praying for them may every gift that is in us may there be maturity that comes to them in this mantle may there be glory that comes those who have traveled from far may they go into a higher dimension into a deeper dimension i pray for the glory um, those guys from belito can you come stand here for me yeah yeah you, you is that testified come stand here for me when i prophesied over you on monday night or sunday night come, come stand here i didn't know if you guys were from belito uh, um you know I want to pray for a special importation for you that God will do the work that he has intended for that area there's been a great spirit in that region that has tried to limit a lot of works but the anointing that you know I was I, I think I was prophesying Sunday night I spoke about family and ministry or something like that and uh um, because they say gener it's like there's a generational anointing when it comes in the area of ministry like there's business and somebody in the area of ministry where there's giftings where the Lord has anointed you to do certain things and I pray for the full stature the full measure of these things to come forth that the Lord will bring you to a place of maturity and that there will be fruitfulness and multiplication in that area that the words of gossip, the words of accusation, the words of slander will not remove you. That the spirit of religion will not remove you. I pray that there will be importation of the glory, but importation from my spirit to you. And importation from my DNA to you. 
an importation from like Paul said to Timothy that of the same mind to you in Jesus name it is a spiritual thing it is a thing that can only be imported a thing that can only be given birth I pray right now for this mantle to cover you and that the Lord will take you and whatever he has planned he will accomplish anoint them right now for the task Anoint them for the task, put purpose on them to know that when they see fruitfulness, when they see multiplication, that it is your sign upon them to extend the kingdom of God. <laughs> Anoint them now and now. <laughs> Raise your hands, raise your hands, raise your hands. I pray right now, Father, may you anoint each one here. May you impart to them. Touch them with this mantle. May glory increase upon their lives. May glory increase upon their lives. May angels become active in their lives. May there be an interaction of angels upon their lives. Those who are watching online, may the anointing come upon them. May the power of God come upon you in your houses where you're watching from. May oil begin to flow from your hands. May gold enter into that house. May you be blessed. May the anointing, may angels enter into your house right now. May the activities of heaven enter into your house. In Jesus' mighty name. Broske, let's go, let's go. The angels announce His presence. The earth is filled with glory. The King is here. The King is here. The angels announce His presence. The earth is filled with glory. The King is here. The King is here.
your presence be with them. Let there be importations for higher dimensions, deeper dimensions. those who need a deliverance who are here may they be delivered fully may the oil that touch their lives cast out every spirit every devil every strong will be broken every, every evil door be closed in Jesus mighty name we give you all the honor the praise and the glory come on let's give a praise of you. God bless you. Thank you so much for staying all these few days for so long. We're going to see Krugersdorp. We'll obviously be here Sunday morning, and then we're Krugersdorp next week. God bless you.